Howdy folks, today I want to talk to you about how you install and debug your Python environments and get started. So I basically wrote down a blog post and I'm going to post a link to that in my video in the description below and that link has all the details about everything I'm going to discuss today. Uh, Basically, your first choice that you have to make is to install Python. Most of the folks go to python.org and download the uh, vanilla version of the Python and then they install other packages as they go. I actually took a slightly different approach and I basically am using something called Anaconda. Anaconda basically um, is another data science platform, an open source data science platform that lets me install a bunch of very popular packages at the same time in a single installation. They have one for Windows and one for Apple users and one for the Linux as well. And r right now they support Python 2.7 and 3.5. I already have installed it so and they also have the installation instructions on their page so I'm gonna skip that and leave it that to, to you. Once you install the Anaconda and an abstract you next need to install an IDE integrated development environment or you need to install or you need to pick your text editor if you don't already have one. Um, for the IDEs you have one choice to use um, first choice is to use Visual Studio and the second is PyCharm now both these IDEs have free as well as paid versions. Visual Studio has a free version called Visual Studio Community Edition that is free and does not have any trial limit or any feature limitations. You can then install something called Python Tools for Visual Studio and that will get you started to start coding Python in your Visual Studio you can also use the paid version the, they have professional as well as premium versions if you so prefer. Uh, on the other side PyCharm has community edition as well as student edition as free options and I think that they also have a professional version if you wanna pay and purchase the license. On the other camp you also can if you don't prefer to use tech IDEs you can also use the lightweight editors now another first option you have is Visual Studio Code which is different from the actual Visual Studio I discussed earlier this is an IDE-ish text editor that supports multiple languages and they also have support for Windows uh, different distributions of Linux as well as Apple users. Uh, and it also supports um, numerous different programming languages like um, Python and C++ and C Sharp, Java, etc. You can also go through their extensions to install more tools to facilitate your development. So if you search for Python here, you're going to get a bunch of add-ons or extensions that would help facilitate your Python development. You, they, you also have um, debugging support, you also have snippets, themes, etc. And this uh, tool also supports your GitHub integration out of the box. Next choice is from GitHub itself. It's something called Atom, and it's a very good text editor uh, as an alternative. And they also have a cool YouTube commercial. Uh, next comes is Brackets from Python from um, Adobe. It is very slick text editor, and um, it is web-based um, text editor that would help you to debug and write down your programs. A very popular choice is Sublime Text. You can use it and I'm not sure if it's if they have a free alternative 
but it is very powerful and very popular and it's very versatile as well. One of my favorites. Next is the TextMate for Apple users. You can download and install as well to do your Python work. Um, I also want to briefly discuss your choice about using GitHub tools. I'm only going to go through only one uh, called Source Tree that is available for Mac as well as Windows. And the beauty is you can also do GUI stuff as well as command line uh, operations, whatever suits or whatever you prefer. Uh, Tower is a good another alternative for Apple users and for Linux users. Um, you can also use something called GitWeb UI, um, but I'm sure that there are other tools that I myself have used in the past about Git um, on Linux. For Merge, you can use uh, different uh, tools that will integrate with Source Tree and so forth. Uh, if you are an existing C Sharp developer and want to map your knowledge to Python, that I found an interesting video on YouTube that helps you do that. So check it out if you are a C Sharp developer and wish to map your knowledge to Python. Now, um, if you want to get more details about IDE and getting started and configuring and, and debugging and development, you'll have I have also embedded a YouTube series for Visual Studio as well as PyCharm to get you more details. So without further ado, let's jump right into the demo. So once you install Anaconda, um, you don't really need to um, uh, mon monkey with your um, uh, environment variables like path and etc. Once you install Anaconda, you can simply type in Python and it will show you uh, that Anaconda has already been installed. So that is your test to make sure that you have installed Python correctly via Anaconda. Next, I want to get started with uh, a demo. I'm going to demonstrate a repository that I downloaded from GitHub as a zip archive. So I'm simply going to open it up and I'm going to extract it for the demo purpose and I'm going to open Visual Studio. I have a slightly old version of Visual Studio. It's 2013. The latest as of now is 2015 and I have a premium version. But I'm not I don't think that that would make any difference to your if you want to follow up with the project. So once you have installed Python tools after installing Visual Studio, the next thing you can do is you can check your Python environments. Uh, if Python has not been auto automatically detected, you can actually also manually add by clicking on the custom button. Once you do that, you would have an opportunity to name your, to give a nickname to your environment, and you can also specify the path to different aspects of your Python installation. For example, the library Python, the windowed interpreter, the Python w.exe, and the interpreter. Um, next thing you want to do is you can also uh, specify uh, more options uh, like your architecture and things like that. So for now I'm going to remove this and after you have an Anaconda configured this is how it might look like. So you would have your different um, properties punched in, in here and it, it, that's ready to go. Next thing is your pip and that's where your packages are coming from. So this all packages you're seeing right now have already been installed as a part of Anaconda installation. And that's also a beauty of it that it makes it pretty easy and immersive experience. And you can also install some new package right here and simply by clicking on it, it is going to execute the, the PyPy uh, pip command to install that particular package if it found on the repository. Another thing, if you want to refresh the IntelliSense, you can also uh, click on this refresh button. That's going to take a minute or two. And that would be very helpful if you have added or removed a bunch of packages from your Python installation. So let's get started with actually 
importing your code into the Python. So once you've extracted that directory, you want to copy the path to that URL. And once you're ready to go with your Python tools, you should also see another um, node in your new project window for Python. You can click the first option, which is to choose from existing Python code. Hit OK, paste your path, hit Next, and here you can set up your default startup file that would be called when you hit the F5 button. I'm going to go with the default right now, but I'm going to change it later for the demonstration purposes. You can hit finish right at this point, or I'm going to also click next to show you the next screen. That's where it, it wants you to detect the virtual environments, or you can also, and additionally, you can also specify if this is a web project or or universal Windows application or what. So that's where you can get to pick. But I'm going to leave it blank for now and hit finish. Once your project is ready to go, you can also open up your file and make changes to it. I'm going to simply have two simple print statements and I'm going to save it and it's going to prompt me if I want to tabify or untabify. That is because Visual Studio has detected that currently I have spaces in here as my indentation object and here my indentation character was tab. So it, it wants to clean that up and to tabify is going to replace the spaces with the tabs and vice versa for untabify. It is your personal preference. I personally prefer to tabify. Also for debugging, I want to set a breakpoint here on this particular line so it, I want this execution flow to be stopped so I can view and inspect problem object for example. Next thing is I for my project it happens that this particular file has the main method so I want this file to be called every time I, I press this little F uh, play button or I, or I hit F5 which is the shortcut key to start my debugging. So I'm going to start this file as my startup file by doing a right click and selecting set as startup file from it. Now I'm ready to go to start debugging in Python using Visual Studio. I simply now click F5 and that already printed the statement in it which is here and it is right now stopping for me at this particular line. I can hover over the object to inspect it and see how it looks like. I can, I can even ex further expand the directory objects to inspect more details on it. Furthermore, I can also double click on here and I can change the value on the file on the fly. And now my this particular value is something else. If you prefer to use a command um, window, you can immediately write down to access the value of this particular variable. You can say problem dot name oops and that is going to give you the value of that particular variable that you have here. Another way is to right mouse and select quick watch. That lets you do the same thing in a more interactive way where you can literally expand the objects and see the details on it. And as you can see that this is helping you figure out that what you might need to write down to access this particular value. So for example, I want to access particular shape value for this. I would simply select this particular value. Now that is not what you might want to do if you're looping through it, but this particular value might be accessed the same way. So that's what, that's what tells you that the figure B's object B uh, has an attribute called shape and its value is square. 
and you can also add the old-fashioned watch but it is just not interactive way of um, playing with those objects you can also delete the breakpoint by clicking on the same breakpoint again and then you can continue your debugging by hitting on this continue button and that is continuing to execute your program now you have basically two choices to execute and debug your program one is what we just used debugging and the second is to start without debugging that's where your program would not stop for the breakpoints it simply executes even though if you have breakpoints or not so that wraps up the Visual Studio demo let's switch to PyCharm now I'm going to start over uh, with the extraction process the same way I did for Visual Studio and because PyCharm takes a little bit time to fire up I already had opened it up in the background now you simply um, specify the path to this particular uh, directory just select copy address as text and paste it right here and hit OK that should basically uh, load your, your project in your IDE to configure the Python environments go to settings and hit Python in the search and select Python interpreter or project interpreter and then you would see that PyCharm automatically has detected Anaconda on my computer on the correct file path. If you don't see it, you need to click on this gear or pinion or the settings icon if, and select add local. And from here, from this window, you can basically specify the path to your python.exe and hit OK to add your Python interpreter to this project. Now just like we saw on Visual Studio you can here see that you have all the packages installed and ready to go for Python that came from Anaconda and this arrow I guess it, it simply is trying to tell me that there's an update available for that package. You To add a new, pa new package that is not part of the Anaconda you can simply click add in here and just like Visual Studio you can also say some package and if it finds a package you can select it from the list you can simply click install package to install that on your project now for debugging experience you can simply click agent.py the file that you want to modify alternatively and you can simply say print in it and my second statement here is print solve um, you can also set a breakpoint by clicking here and then if I want to start debugging from another file the simplest way of doing that is to right mouse on the file that you want to start executing in my case it is going to be this particular file I can I similarly just like Visual Studio I have two choices to run or to debug run again would not stop for the breakpoints debug would so I'm going to select debug and fair enough it actually um, also stops here and sure enough I would also see my problem uh, pro object that I can view and inspect it here and I can also drill down to whatever um, the environment or whatever the value I want to see and I can also add the watch to it. So that basically concludes your PyCharm demo um, about how to get started.